let's make some coffee. Now let's move on and prepare our espresso. Check that the group handle doesn't have any drops of water or damp or any previous residues. And then fill it with the two doses of coffee you need to make our espresso. Make sure that each dose, i.e. each pull of the lever, contains between 7 to 8 grams of ground coffee. Flatten it off so that it is perfectly level and then, using the hand tamper, press down with a pressure of around 12 kilos. Now attach the group handle. Take two coffee cups, always from the handle, and fill them. Remember, 25 milliliters in 25 seconds from the moment you press the button, with a water temperature of between 88 and 90 degrees, and a pump pressure of 9 atmospheres. You'll see that the coffee should pour like a mouse's tail so as to fill the right amount of coffee into the cup. This coffee took around 18 seconds to pour, which means the coffee hasn't been correctly ground. So tighten the dial a couple of notches on the dosing chamber grinder. Now you're in the right position. Remove the small amount of coffee left inside the grinder, grounding with the old setting, and grind your coffee with the right setting. We have just made some coffee with the incorrect grinding setting, so we'll remove the residues. Make sure you always brush the group handle, and when you tap it, don't tap it on the metal, but tap it in the correct way on the wooden part of the waste drawer. Refill the doses. Level off. Press. And espresso. And here is your perfect coffee. Of course, it's Costa d'Oro. We have just gone over how a bartender can make two perfect cups of espresso thanks to an excellent blend. But the same person, with an excellent blend, can unfortunately serve espresso coffee that is far from perfect as well. Let's take a look at two typical examples of badly made espresso. Firstly, we haven't cleaned the group handle. We haven't checked if the dose is right or not or whether the grinding is fine enough, and we end up making an espresso that is technically called under-extracted, i.e. empty, with a temporary foam and none of the features of a great Italian espresso. This is what happens when we serve an espresso of this kind. As you can see, in this case we have a coffee without hardly any foam, that's empty in the middle, and doesn't look particularly appealing. Here instead, we have a typical example of an over-extracted coffee. In this case, the reason for the over-extraction could be different or the opposite of what we had before, i.e. an excessive dose of coffee or coffee that is ground too finely, or even a machine with an excessive temperature, which actually burns the coffee, resulting in an over-extraction of coffee in terms of the quantity of liquid produced as well. And here's another example of how not to serve a coffee. An over-extracted coffee has a lasting dark foam and, as you can see, the typical sign we call a white button, which indicates over-extraction. If you have followed all these rules, you will end up serving your customers the perfect espresso with an attractive walnut color and a thick, long-lasting foam that doesn't open up even when you rotate the cup. Make sure you keep the handle on the right, the teaspoon on the right, 
and the coffee cups on top of the machine facing up so as not to burn your customers' mouths. And here's a delicious Costadoro coffee.